Hey, welcome back to True Moto Resto. This is part two of the carburetor restoration, rebuild, cleaning, whatever you want to call it. Um, so they just come out of the ultrasonic cleaner. And the uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, blow all these out with the airline. And then I'm going to also, uh, I'm going to run my high E guitar string through some of the orifices. Uh, and along the way, I'll also use my, uh, this set of picks or whatever you call them, the carburetor jet cleaning uh, tool just to make sure everything is clean. I'm pretty sure they are, but I'm gonna do it anyway, just to be sure. And uh, then we'll start the reassembly. Yeah, so the areas I like to uh, clean with the, the guitar string is just any of the, any of the holes where I can't get a, a real good level of certainty around you know, their cleanliness by using compressed air. So like, like inside, um, inside here, the, and I can see it come out right here by the air cut. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of retrace my steps here and uh, we're gonna do the air cut covers first and most of the uh, if not all the contents of these are brand new so I really don't need to use any of the old internal parts all I've got to fish out is the, the covers so on the air cut uh, covers uh, there's a little bit of, uh, kind of residue crusty stuff around the edge so I just got a, a very a light duty piece of scotch bright and some carb cleaner and give it a very light cleaning. That's good to go. I'd love to know what uh, the carb experts out there use to get the jets nice and clean. Um, I mean, these are clean from the perspective of the fuel will pass through them without any issues. They're nice and open and whatnot, but they look tarnished. So how do you restore these things to the uh, the shiny brass uh, that they would have been when they were new? I, uh, I, I've never been able to find anything to do that. All the products I use kind of leave them with a tarnished look and I would much prefer it if they were kind of looking shiny and new again so let me know <laughs> Next up is the uh, mixture screws. So there's washers and new O-rings here. And uh, all right, well, I completely shit the bed on that particular scenario because uh, I lost it. I no sooner said, I gotta be careful with these. And I'll keep the other ones as spares. And I went and lost. I just spent 50 minutes crawling around the floor. And uh, fortunately, I actually have a brand new one from another set. 
that I didn't use. So now what I'm going to do is I will seat these guys. And then uh, I do have to check the manual to make sure I've got them the correct number of turns out. They were two and a half turns. But i got to double check to make sure that's correct. When you seat them, you don't want to seat them too tight just till they bottom out. You don't want to be cranking them down hard or anything like that. Okay, so check the manual. It is, in fact, two and a half turns out on the 82 model. There's a half, there's one, there's one and a half, there's two, there's two and a half. Okay, so next I'm going to do the, uh, the O-rings on the drain plugs. I'm just cleaning the, uh, the tips of these with a bit of carb cleaner and the uh, Scotch-Brite pad. And then uh, they can go back in the float bowls. Okay, all the new O-rings are on. I did not drop any. So wonders never cease. Okay, so now I'm going to do the uh, accelerator pump. All right, so I cleaned the accelerator pump cover with uh, my 3M scotch white pad and some carb cleaner. I would say that uh, you want to make sure these things are, are dry and that all the carb cleaner is no longer sitting in here when you put it back together. Um, just because carburetor cleaner can do very nasty things to uh, rubber. So, yeah, just be careful with those things. There's the uh, accelerator pump the shaft there. There's a new O-ring sitting right here. So, so I've, I've given these uh, floats uh, a good looking over and a shake and there's no, there's no fuel in there. So just, yeah, they're all dry. None of those are leaking. There we go. Okay. So I, uh, my, to my understanding, to my knowledge, there is no way to adjust the float height on these particular floats. There's no bendable tab. It's just a plastic fitting that the needle sits in. Um, so uh, I went through all that whole process last time when I checked the, uh, the float heights, they were all fine. So I'm not going to do that again, but there, regardless, I, I don't know of any way to check, oh sorry, not to check, but to change the float heights on these anyway so if anybody else out there knows that that is possible then stick a comment below and, and let me know okay float bowl gaskets um so just for your knowledge uh, i did uh, and i didn't i forgot to film it um but i did put these on my uh my metal table for the drill press and just a little bit of I just kind of rub them on the flat surface, being careful not to um, damage the lugs and avoid the uh, overflow tube and whatnot. And I did manage to knock down any of the high spots, if you can see on this one. Um, I point to it with the pick here. There was a bit of a high spot right here. There was some high spots along this edge here and also right here. Um, these also polished up a little bit as well, which tells me they were, were slightly high. Um, and the couple of spots actually right around the outside edge uh, caught a bit of polish as well. Uh, most, the only high spots on the inside was basically here and here. So uh, this is the one part so far that I've been having some trouble getting the, uh, <clears throat> the replacement parts to sit nicely or fit properly. And that's the uh, the float bowl gaskets. Um, they're they seem to have a decent profile on them to seal well, but they don't fit well between the uh, there's kind of retaining tabs inside the channel 
that they're kind of supposed to fit into, and they do, but it, it's not tight enough to hold it in place. And as soon as you start working it around, it just kind of, kind of keeps one popping out everywhere, so I'd just rather put a little bit of rubber grease on here. I mean, these things will seal up no issue, I'm sure, but I just gotta make sure they don't pop out when I go to put them on. You can see here they these little tabs or lugs that hold the gasket in place. And just they just kind of pop right back out again. There's no just not grabbing onto that. Sure, they'll they'll do their job once it's compressed, but as of right now, it's a pain in the ass. All right, uh, all the float bowls are now back on. Bit of a wrestling match took place with the carburetor number two. Getting all that lined up, the, uh, the the gasket kept popping out, so I had to put a little bit more rubber grease in there just to hold it in place. Um, but I won eventually. Um, just had to be careful. I don't want to. Really didn't want to pinch any of those new uh, float bowl gaskets in the process so i think i think we're okay on that one now so uh yeah now i'll move on to uh to the next stage and uh, there is i have learned a uh there's actually a rubber washer an o-ring that has to be <clears throat> replaced in these so if you take this cap out of here there's an o-ring on there all right so everything is uh everything's reassembled individual carbs wise so <clears throat> i guess we'll call that progress the next the next thing i have to do now is to uh to reassemble carbs three and four and then reassemble carbs one and two and then once those two are back together then i can put carbs two and three uh join those together so this is i think is going to be the uh the tricky part of the process getting everything lined up so i think the first thing i'm going to do is put the uh put the new o-rings on these and uh that has to go on and then there's also and then there's a, a spring that goes in the back this this fork here which is the control actuator the lever for the choke butterfly that has to kind of fit on here and if you can see here but there is there's a it's just spring loaded and then there's kind of a, a couple of plates right here I can force this in between the two. You can see them open up a little bit. There, okay, right there. So that kind of has to fit. That fork, that lever has to fit in between these two. And so the, the challenge will be, I mean, that's a, that's a pretty stiff spring in there. Um, you can see how well it's holding this. Uh, I gotta get something in there. <laughs> She's in just a little bit of fiddling. It wasn't it wasn't as difficult as I had imagined it might be. And then now I gotta get this throttle plate spring in between. And now squeeze the whole lot together. And there we have it. So now, now I can put the uh choke plate back on there Oops, in there like so carburetor
Success. Alrighty, so there's the uh, the two pairs <clears throat> of carbs are now back together. I've got uh, this ready to go back into uh, one piece. So I'd like to get that started first. If I can get that, that throttle linkage to line up. That is all hooked up. It's not the choke assembly. I mean, maybe it'll work better once it's uh, I'll say re-racked. Let's put it that way. Anyway, the uh, they're all together. I think now I just got to make sure they don't come apart again. So I'm going to put the uh, put at least one of these bars on. <laughs> So, we've got everything back together. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't terrible um, getting it all in one piece. Um, what I have not yet done is this, you see this uh, main fuel connector is not on and there's a reason for that. Um, I'm going to directly connect uh, a fuel line to this and I'm going to set it in uh, my uh, trusty testing basin with uh, a fuel bottle attached to it and uh, then I'm going to let it sit. So obviously any any obvious leaks will show up within minutes or seconds and uh, if I'll have to address that if it does and then other than that it's going to sit for 24 hours on a, on a fuel feed just to make sure that uh, nothing's Leaking, make sure the uh, the needles and seats are working as they should, all the gaskets and whatnot are, are holding, um, and that way I'm not dealing with a mess the first time I connect it up when it goes back on the bike. Alright, so carbs are in the bowl, there's a uh, shop towel in the bottom, and then the fuel line is connected to the remote bottle. I've only got about that much fuel in there, but that's okay. That's enough for the test. And now we'll just start the feed and hope that everything is good. So I'll just start watching down here to make sure. I don't see anything yet. I'll stick my hand down there and just check those float bowls. So far, so good. So I'm going to just leave that connected now um, for the rest of the day, potentially into tomorrow as well. And as I said, it just uh, it's just extra insurance uh, just to make sure that uh, there's nothing leaking. There you go. Thank you very much for watching. That should conclude. I'm hoping that concludes the carburetor rebuild. Please like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And if you didn't, leave a comment. Let me know why. Maybe I did something wrong. 
Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you soon.